Wow, we have been building these Premiership semi-finals up for some time and holy moly, the first one between Northampton Saints and Saracens certainly delivered. Hello amateurs, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to be here with you throughout the end of the season and beyond, so hit subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now then, this was billed as the team who topped the league, who played the best and most consistent rugby all season, versus the season pros. This was the last dance for this Saracens dynasty, which would come out on top. I predicted Saints, and I thought they would do it comfortably in the end, but man, that was challenged by a really excellent Saracens performance for long, long periods in this game. And Franklin's Gardens was absolutely fizzing, like you could feel it through the TV. The commentators mentioned it, the noise, they'd never heard that much noise, and uh, man, it got off to a frantic start. Saracens, when they got the ball playing really, really fast, trying to keep the ball alive, really challenged this Northampton defence. They clearly thought they could go after it and get some points. And they got some good breaks early doors as well. Elliot Daly in particular slicing through. But there was some huge defence from Northampton as well at times. Curtis Langdon again with some huge hits and he just looks like a missile when he goes and tackles. I think it's hugely impressive. But Saracens were winning penalties early doors as well, knocking Northampton off their stride. And Elliot Daly was doing the kicking for Saracens, I believe an injury to Warren Farrell, um, which stopped him from doing the kicking. But Daly, all night, kicked like a dream and, you know, just whacking a ball over like he's, he's prone to do from... 50 odd meters he was doing the short ones as well and a couple of early pens had Saracens into a 6-0 lead and they were looking sharp they were looking good I was worried for my prediction I was worried for Northampton Saints at this point because when Northampton did get the ball they kind of they never really found their shape they never really found their pattern Saracens hugely physical on defense and most importantly dominating the breakdown, winning turnover penalty after turnover penalty. Ben Earl, in particular, being ferocious in that area. But 20 minutes in, first bit of really loose play. I think it came from a bit of kick tennis and, and a, just a loose kick somewhere. And George Furbank, who was really excellent all night, just sniping. He always put pace on the ball, always looking for space. Managed to get the ball through to Odendahl. On first glance on the TV, it was like, how how on earth has he got that ball through there? But Tompkins has stepped just ahead uh, and out of the line. Furbank got it in behind to Odendahl, who was also excellent all night, by the way, um, to go under, get Saints moving, 7-6. And um, that, was the, that was the blueprint, really, I think, for how Saints needed to go and win this game. They kept the ball moving and... When you tip the ball on, if you get then get tackled, you're a man out away. You're a uh, somebody who might have cleared that ruck away. But Saints were brave. They kept trying to do it. They kept trying to move the point of attack. Um, and at this stage of the game, it was it was absolutely game on. Saracens went back down the other end, and Jamie George galloped over for a try, which you know on first glance everybody was just would never have questioned it and it was only when the replays came up you realized that George was ahead of the kick and kept moving forward and was therefore offside and this is the type of offense that probably happens many many times a game but unless it directly leads to a try will never get picked up or rarely gets picked up uh, but it was the correct call Austin Healy picked it up immediately when he saw the replay and uh, yeah correctly disallowed for offside the game was tight though at this stage. 7 6. Really, you know, the teams are trying to play, but they weren't really getting through a huge number of phases. So, what's important now is you need to be getting the ball back when you kick it. And Tommy Freeman did it for the second time in this half, rising supremely with his hands way above his head uh, to win back a box kick. That led to a penalty and 10 6 for Northampton. Uh, shortly afterwards, Owen Farrell knocked on a pass from Ben Earl, which made the, probably the biggest cheer of the night. Uh, and that led to a scrum pen for Northampton, who were now starting to get on top in this vital part of the game. With all this pressure, with the errors that were being created, there was a lot of scrums, and to be on top in that area was absolutely vital. So, 
13-6 now, uh, and Saints getting scores for their dominance, whereas Saracens didn't get a huge amount, just the six points early in the game for them um, when they were more dominant. Saracens did get uh, territory and possession, but a knock, um, it was a turnover at the line-out, and Pearson, Tom Pearson, kicked the ball miles down the pitch, which led to an, another unforced error from Elliot Daly, and it was a huge momentum shift, that one led to a big penalty right on the break of half time from wide out Finn Smith whacking it over for 16-6 at half time and it was breathless what a first half absolutely breathless Saracens were really physical they were winning the breakdown but they were importantly they were making a few errors the one that I mentioned by Farrell and Daly and there were a few others as well which just stopped them from really uh, pressing home the advantages that they did have Saints kind of looked better I think just um, when they were trying to keep the ball moving uh, trying to keep changing the point of attack but they hadn't really found their flow Saracens were doing a great job of suffocating them and winning turnovers at the breakdown I was thinking at half time if you're Saints you've just got to be brave you've got to keep playing that's your route to victory you'll break them down in the end yes you may lose a few turnover penalties at the, at the breakdown still but I just thought, keep playing, keep playing. And for Saracens, they just needed to keep doing what they were doing as well and then maybe stop making the errors and get the rub of the green when it came to executing for points. Um, but early in the second half, and the bit, one of the biggest factors of this game, and this is a scrum, Saints were getting another few scrum penalties and this was, it was turning into a moment of real dominance for them. 51 minutes... Billy Vunapola goes off and I questioned about his selection in the run-up to this and I'm pleased to say I thought he was really excellent on the night. He was fizzing, he was physical both sides of the ball and it was it was a bit back like the old days for Billy so I was really delighted for him that he got a performance on what has turned out to be his last Saracens uh, game. At the same time as Billy going off, Saracens basically emptied the bench and man, they made an impact. Uh, just the forwards carrying super hard, just getting over gain line, over gain line. Owen Farrell makes a break and just perfect timing and execution to grub a through for Lewington try. And at 16-13, this was, a, by the way, a far left-hand touchline conversion for Elliot Daly, who again just whacked it over very casually, almost turning to run back before the ball had left his boot. Made it 16-13. I thought at this point of the game, Saints might push on and get clear, but it was actually Saracens who came back and made it a very tight game and nervy for the next few minutes. This was a tense part of the game. Finn Smith missed a very, very kickable penalty. And shortly afterwards, probably the most exciting moment of the match was when Mitchell created something for Dingwall. I say he created it. Actually, Mitchell was drifting and Dingwall spotted that the gap was on the inside, chopped back inside, pushed off against Gonzalez and put Mitchell away for what looked like it was going to be all the world a try and probably the defining moment of the game until Gonzalez somehow got back and almost with just one arm flipped Mitchell into touch unbelievable try saving tackle you don't see many better I'm thinking Sam Underhill against Wales a number of years ago probably a similar standard like it just looked like it was going to be a try <clears throat> excuse me however shortly afterwards another Mitchell break led to a penalty for 19-13 Saints have emptied their bins by this point and Manny Ogan came on and carried on where Waller left off he was dominating Hoskins Scrum penalties, scrum dominance, and this was a key factor probably in the second half. <clears throat> Mario Toji subbed. 68 minutes. Answers on a postcard or in the comments down below. When was the last time you can sit, remember seeing Mario Toji subbed off ever? And I tell you, I think I know why. I think it's because Nick Izikwe was doing a brilliant job of disrupting the Northampton line-out. Itoji had a good game, I thought, um, but Izikwe was doing such a good job on the line-out. I think that was the key factor that, that meant that he stayed on and Itoji came off. Um, however, another scrum penalty shortly afterwards. Again, this is, you know, themes here. This scrum was really, really crucial in this game. Finn Smith whacked it over for 22-13. Nine points up, nine minutes to go. It felt like 
that was kind of it and for a, a period of time there Saints had a bit of ball they looked after the ball they sort of just sort of suffocated took Saracens out of the game and doing a really good job and it just felt like it was going to fizzle out not fizzle out but just get to a nice comfortable win for Saints but Saracens came back Sinti over in the corner for 22-20 again really importantly Daly nailing every single kick uh, this one just as relaxed as the previous ones and Saracens basically had one last chance could they get up the pitch could they force a penalty somehow Saracens uh, sorry Northampton showed great discipline in defense they didn't over chase anything and when there was a chance Theo Dan was the one who got held up and turned into a maul again when can you ever remember that Theo Dan just so low to the ground so compact just carrying explosive and um yeah I mean I I don't think it's ever happened before but Courtney Laws was a part of that along with the reserve second row whose name uh, escapes me and it was him actually who really made the crucial thing there he was the one who got underneath Laws joined on and confirmed it and there we are full time an absolute thriller at Franklin's Gardens lived up to the billing in every way this is an absolute advert for saying that you don't need plentiful tries to have an exciting game there was all sorts going on in this game and I'm, pl I'm really pleased to say very little um, controversy around refereeing decisions there was there was virtually none of that which was great to see um, so well done the officials as well I think this is almost like um, a coming of age victory for Northampton after losing their Champions Cup semi-final you know there was the talk can they if they're going to be a great team if they're going to be a really good team they have to go and win these high pressure games and they did it and I think there was a nice moment in the second half which kind of epitomized it for me like you have to have a ruthless streak you have to be you have to really play the game and after one of the scrum penalties Jamie George again questioned the referee about what you know he wasn't being rude or anything he was just saying what was the penalty for all that kind of Smith stuff and as Finn Smith step forward to kick the ball down the pitch he just had a little word he said is he going to question every uh, decision or something like that? you couldn't hear it but he just sort of had a little jab at Jamie George and he fired back verbally as well and I just thought that's that's sort of gamesmanship that's getting into the referee it's getting into the opposition at the same time and letting them know that you're dominant well done Finn Smith for that I thought that was that was a lovely bit of gamesmanship so there we are Saints top the table Played the best rugby all season and they deservedly get a premiership final. Saracens, it's the end of this dynasty. So many great players are leaving this team and leaving this league now. The Vunipolas and, and Farrell in particular have been incredible servants to Saracens and the English game. So amazingly well done to them. But Northampton march on and I think no matter who they play in the final, they will be favourites. So fair play to them brilliant game but what do you think anything that I've missed out that you think was really vital I'd love to hear your thoughts let's have them in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a friendly conversation give this video a thumbs up while you're down there if you don't mind and you can subscribe there you can watch that one next and do not forget to get out and play